I'm TIG welding aluminum today using an Alley 5 clear cup and comparing it to some pink ceramic cups at different AC frequencies. Let's do it. Higher frequency settings, like 150 hertz and above, seem to have almost the same effect that high-speed pulse has on DC. It helps when welding on an edge or near an edge. It helps confine the bead, makes the puddle stick where you put it, and kind of prevents arc wandering, keeps that puddle from chewing off an edge. Just for an idea on the travel speed I was using, I put a cheap speed square up to it, about an eighth of an inch per second, a little bit faster than that once I get comfortable. I want to increase that AC frequency to 250 hertz because I'm going to weld on an edge. This is not difficult to do, even with 60 hertz or 50 hertz, but it just works better with a higher frequency. This is 3 16ths of an inch thick aluminum, and I'm motoring on pretty good here. And it really seems to me that that high frequency is pushing my travel speed a little bit. I'm going at a pretty good clip. Welding on an edge requires a whole lot less amperage. I'm only using 85, 86 amps right here. And I'm using a pink cup, so it's not lighting things up quite as much as you saw earlier with that clear cup. It does a fine job, though. I like a number six gas lens for something like this. Good all-around cup for aluminum. I'm going to 200 hertz now for an outside corner joint on some 50 thousandths thick material. Again, I'm using that Alley 5 clear cup. You can see it's kind of lighting things up pretty well all around the bead. There's the penetration side. I'm going a little bit slower here. I've got hash marks every inch so you can see how fast I'm going. But I go a little bit slower on something thin like this, especially if there's any gaps at all. And you can only step out so far with thin metal. You see, we just take a little step before I add rod, and even sometimes I back up a little bit. If I step out too far, I'll blow a hole. Here's another example of travel speed where I have a hash mark every eighth of an inch. You can see I'm, I'm covering just about an eighth of an inch every second. That's just a starting point. I find it's a really good place to start for beginners and people learning to TIG weld. All right, now let's go all the way to 300 hertz for an outside corner joint here. And this really did seem to push my travel speed. I wasn't realizing it, but I was going at a really good clip. And I didn't really enjoy the noise of a 300 hertz arc, but man, did it do a good job. Just a heads up, the rest of this video is somewhat commercial, but I still tried to make it very educational. It's full of arc shots and full of tips. I want to take a minute and show you some of the changes we've made to one of our most popular TIG kits. It's the Weldmonger Furic Arsenal Kit. What we've done is we've added a 4 through 8 standard ceramic cup to make this kit even more useful for most every situation. The large Furic cups are, are great for stainless, inconel, titanium, but sometimes you don't need all that gas and you don't want to use all that gas if it's a Sunday afternoon and the welding stores are closed. So we, we're, we got you covered here going all the way down to a number four cup. This 332nd Furic gas lens works with all these cups. So let's take a look at swapping out the normal hardware, the stuff that comes with most torches, with the Furic Arsenal kit hardware. One benefit that you notice right away is it just shrinks the overall size of the torch. It just kind of makes it more maneuverable, makes it be able to reach into tighter spots. And the clear cup that comes with it, the number eight cup, really lights things up. I started using clear cups strictly to film. I was kind of skeptical, but I, I saw right away they really helped me see better. The number eight clear cup is good for AC and DC. This is a little plate with a bead on plate here with I've, I've scribed lines about an eighth of an inch apart just so you can see the detail. See how well this cup lights things up. It really helps. The ceramic Jazzy 10 is a DC cup. Great for stainless steel, chromoly, carbon steel, tool steel, even some light titanium work. This is some 4130 chromoly and this is the second pass. I'm doing a little pedal pumping here. But another benefit of a cup like this is if you get a really good shielded first pass, the second pass just goes in a whole lot better. If you need a little bit more shielding with a little longer stick out, the Ceramic 12 is a good choice. Here's some stainless steel 120 wall tubing. With stainless steel, just a little tip, you want to get that puddle started quickly, get moving quickly to kind of outrun the heat. You don't always just want to weld with less amperage. Sometimes hotter and faster is better. The clear BBW is a great cup for titanium. The bigger the cup, 
generally speaking, the more gas flow it requires, and this one might require as much as 35 or 40 CFH, but when you're welding titanium, the little extra argon is just cost of doing business. It's, it's necessary. It comes with the long cap, the medium cap, and the short button cap. Now, where would you want to use these cups? Well, again, if it's a Sunday afternoon and your your your, your tank is down to about two or three hundred, and you got a job you need to get out, and it, the job doesn't really require super excellent shielding, a four or a five cup makes sense. It also makes sense for flash tacking. You don't waste a lot of gas while you're just doing a, a little quick burst tack on some sheet metal corner joints. There's a purpose for every cup. You know, one size does not fit all. The number five cup is great for aluminum butt joints, can actually help with penetration by limiting that cleaning action and kind of focusing the energy on the puddle. Another reason to have a good assortment of cups is sometimes you might get into a situation like this where you're walking the cup on a small fillet weld. You don't want to use a whole bunch of extra gas. It doesn't require it. When you've got that cup right up, right up against the metal like that, it requires a little bit less gas flow than it does if you've got a long stick out and, and freehand in it. A number six is also a really good all-around cup for aluminum. This is an outside corner joint on eighth inch thick material. If you need a little longer stick out than you can get with the six, take it up to a number seven, just increase the argon flow. About two and a half CFH per cup size gets you right in the ballpark, usually. And then there's the number eight, which is kind of a really good all-around cup for stainless and chromoly and carbon steel. This little demonstration really shows the difference between the standard hardware that comes with a TIG torch as opposed to a stubby gas lens. I'm using the same long stick out here. It's a half inch stick out. I'm going to use the same stick out on all these cups. This is sped up 4x, but you can see it's just kind of squiggly. I'm losing shielding at that stick out at about 20 CFH. Not very good for stainless steel. Now here I'm using the same exact stick out with the same flow rate with a stubby gas lens and it's like somebody flipped a switch on. Now all of a sudden it's cleaned up. Now if I put the Jazzy 10 on there with that secondary diffuser I'm going to get a little bit better shielding. Not like night and day here but it's still it's even better and if I went up to a number 12 it would improve a little bit more. It just depends on what you need and how much gas you want to use. If you're still using the old hardware that came with your torch, you're going to notice a huge difference here on steel and stainless steels. If you want to get a closer look, just go to weldmonger.com. Go up to TIG Welding Accessories and then drop down and over here to Furic Arsenal Kits. And there they are for the 171826 as well as for the 920. Once you open that page up, there's a few other images that kind of clear things up for you and show you what's inside the kit all the contents and inside the tray right there and then there's another piece of information here to help you make sure you're getting the right one for your torch and then all you got to do is add it to the cart